Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and you're watching a video about the Simple 1500 series on the PlayStation 1. Now, the Simple 1500 series was a range of budget games that were released for the PS1 in Japan, each costing 1,500 yen. There are other lines in the Simple series like Utility Software, a Hello Kitty line of games and many others. But in this video, we'll just be looking at a few of the games in the original lineup. Now, you could describe these games as the first PlayStation indie titles as they are produced by small software houses. You could also describe most of these games as crap as you had such masterpieces as Pachinko, some really awful puzzle games. But some of these are actually pretty good. Anyway, unlike many other YouTubers, I am not using PC emulation for this video. These are the original discs, which have been ripped and installed onto my Hack 2006 original launch Japanese 60 gig PS3. We begin with The Pro Wrestling, which has some absolutely glorious title screen music. Following that, we have a cluster of options all written in Japanese. So long as you're not some pleb who buys import games and can't read Japanese, this is not a problem. However, I am that pleb. But it's okay, because I have this brand new device, you might have heard of it, it's called an iPhone. And used in this box of black magic trickery, even someone like me can stumble through otherwise impenetrable text. Next, we have the most unfathomable character select screen in the history of gaming. I know I am choosing who I want to play as, but what on earth are these icons all about? Who should I pick? Rising Sun Man? Cosmic Heart Dude? Sasori? Actual Godzilla, Space Octopus, The Third Reich, Nintendogs? What we have here is a classic button masher, coupled with graphics that are better than expected, all running at an almost sexual frame rate. It actually plays like those old N64 WCW games from the late 90s, and I was always crap at those too. And you can tell this is from the late 90s, as there is a guy in the audience that is wearing a WWF shirt. Although, I seriously doubt Vince McMahon gave the okay for these guys to use his logo. I'll try and get to the meat of this game, even though I was just awful at it. You have your basic attacks, a grapple, a run button, and that's about all I can get out of the joypad. On my first turn, I played as this masked character dude, and I got utterly demolished by this skinny guy in purple underwear. Just when I thought the match was turning around and I was on a roll, he just came back and ruined me. Once he got the three count over me, for some reason the crowd resembling people just turned into a mess of blocks. I tried again as this guy in black shorts, but as you can see, the man in the rather fetching gold outfit was having none of it. I soon applied some kicks to the family jewels and let a further beatdown commence. I was pretty confident that this time I was going to be the one celebrating in front of the crowd of Lego, but alas, this was not to be. Goldman Slaps caught his wind once more and laid the smack down. Before long, it was all over once again. So the next game I've chosen for this video is called The Soccer. Although really, this is just a re-release of a game called Dynamite Soccer 98, as is blatantly clear from just looking at the background in the options menu. This is a really basic football game, not only in terms of gameplay mechanics, but presentation and player models. But despite its very simple style, I find the vibrant colour actually quite appealing. Much in the same way as Victory Goal on the Sega Saturn, although that had vastly superior music. You can choose to play an exhibition match, something called the AMAX Cup, create a tournament, play against an all-star team. Although, as this game doesn't seem to feature any official FIFA branding, I assume you're going to be playing against the likes of David Beecham, Vinyl Messi and Pepe. If you do find yourself in the situation that you have literally got bored of every other video game in existence and only have Dynamite Soccer left to play, I'd imagine that you'd have a go at the exhibition mode before the inevitable crippling depression takes hold. Once into this mode, you'll be asked to choose which one of the world top footballing nations you would like to play as, or you can choose to play as America. Everyone, 
once the game begins, you're presented with a rather basic but functional game of football. Things like where to kick the ball on a corner kick are rather unusual, and the ball acts like some sort of magnet to players' feet. But it's okay if you're not looking for a serious kick about. The next game I've chosen is the Pachinko, which, if you didn't know, is all about your balls being used to score even more balls with the end goal of having as many balls as you can. In Japan, they love pachinko. Over there, you can swap the huge amount of balls you get for prizes. But in this video game, what can you swap your balls for? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Stupid! So you're putting in pretend balls into a pretend machine to win more pretend balls and at the end there's not even a pretend prize. What's the actual point? Either way, you have a few options, like to choose whether you want to pretend that you're inserting your balls during the day or night. Then it's off to the machine selection. The choice is one of three machines. Love Project, Star Robot and some surf themed one. For the hardcore ballers, there are different variations of each machine. But as the close-ups show, they are very minor changes in the locations of the pins that guide your balls. So I begin with a machine called Love Project. Your balls are automatically thrust into the machine, but you can change how many balls and at what speed they enter the playing field. What you're trying to aim for is the various triggers on the game board. By getting Getting a ball into the area labelled start, you'll get numbers in the centre spinning around. If the first two match, then the second part of this mini game will begin. Now I'm not totally sure if the third number is random or is influenced by hitting other triggers on the playing field. I never managed to match three numbers, but I assume if you do, you just win a load of balls. This seems to be pretty much the entire game covered at this point. If you pick a different theme table like Star robot it's the same thing with a very similar fruit machine style mini game in its center which is activated in the same way as love project is although saying that the weird surf theme table doesn't feature a fruit machine in its center but rather a guy that looks like he's just about to defecate and he's rather happy about it on this table you have to hit certain triggers that get these purple flippers moving this will give you a chance to aim your balls at the center for some sort of bonuses sorry if this all sounds very vague but pachinko makes no sense to me if i'm handing over money to put my balls into a slot i'm not thinking about pachinko i'm thinking about pinball i'm not going to introduce the next game just watch the intro and see if you can work out what type of game it is by the end What sort of game is this? They explained absolutely nothing. It's a puzzle game and you can either be a yellow cat with a guitar or a pink cat brandishing a keytar. With that life-changing dilemma over with, it's onto the game. And it's your tried and tested match three of the same colour. It's like someone saw how well Puzzle Bobble was doing at the time and thought, how can we rip this off without being sued? So they turn the game on its side, introduce this ball launcher mechanic and boom! Brand new game, just like that. So yeah, you use this launcher to change the trajectory and power behind each colour ball that you launch with the aim of getting three or more colours to touch each other. If you can cause one set of colours to disappear to lead to another group to, to disappear, you'll get combo points. You do actually get a sort of boss battle every so often, which means you have to get rid of a certain ball to win, and chances are that ball is buried under a load of others. The boss will climb the ramp towards you, so this acts like a 
timer to complete the level within the time it takes the boss to get you. This is the most average game ever made. It's not awful, it's not great either. It's just functional, but not addictive. It's so bog standard and stock, you'd expect it to be a demo game included with one of those write your own video game programs. The final game I want to show you is very different though. This is called the Sniper. Let me run you through this. So it begins with a backstory of a guy called Harry C. Spencer who was in the fire department and would save people's lives. Then two years ago, Google Translator started making zero sense and something was counterfeit in a warehouse he was training in. I'm guessing Harry got in the way of some gangsters or something because Google Translator is still not making any, any sense. There's someone called Claire and someone called Gloria and none of this matters. Look, Harry has a gun and now some dudes are gonna get shot up. Harry hears a noise outside his rather basic apartment, but all he finds is a note. Then you get this rather jazzy intro. Then the actual game starts. You get a look at the target, followed by a choice of day or night, and which position you'd like to take. I'm guessing I was given clues on what choices I should make here, but it was all in Japanese, so I'm just gonna have to go in blind. So you appear in the position you selected, and have to have a look around with your scope to track down where the target is. The first stage is really easy. The guy's just sitting on a chair. Pop a cap in his head, and you win. Hang on, is this the end credits? Was that it? I know this game only costs 1500 yen, but even an arcade game lasts longer than that. Oh no, that's just how it ends the stage. You get a bit more story where Harry finds another note. Let's kill someone else. Hold on, why is it playing the intro again? This is milked. So now we have to kill this dude in a white suit and the game makes it a little bit harder for us by having two NPCs that look like they might be the target. Luckily, I shot the correct one and I'm blessed with seeing the jazzy outro again. Yeah, thanks. After a bit of story with Harry not finding a note this time, yep, you guessed it, it's the bloody jazz intro again. Who thought this was a good idea? Why are they doing this to me? Anyway, the next target is this goth. So, the game's first legitimate target then. You look around and he's not there. Turns out you have to wait for him to walk around the corner. Bit of story, jazzy outro, save the game. Bit of story, jazzy intro, and finally a look at the next target. You know, this game is not really that bad. For the price they were asking for it when it was new, it's very reasonable for the amount that's actually on offer. And thankfully you can skip the jazzy sections, and we're talking about a game that's almost 20 years old. It turns out that indie games have been alive and well on the PlayStation for generations, but I do find it strange that most of this series of titles never left Japan. Oh well, that's it for now. Ah, bye.